Thank you very much for joining me on this lecture on soft skills as social glue, educating executive intelligence for global sustainability. Culture is what brings us together. It is as the basis of the Eurasia project and a catalyst for its future. Culture carries tremendous intrinsic value, which functions as a social glue able to heal wounds in times of crisis. In recent years, common problems such as the global pandemic and climate change call for global coordinated actions. The impending artificial intelligence revolution is also going to alter the functioning of our societies. Today, more than ever, we need to act together and work together to find sustainable solutions to reimagine our future. At the Eurasia Foundation, we are convinced that culture is a cornerstone for the revival of our world and must be put at the center of the political debate and decision-making. Culture covers many interdisciplinary fields, from urban architecture to biodiversity strategies, and it can bring significant value to the world circular economy. In Europe, the European Union has recently prepared a cultural deal, devoting at least 2% of the EU recovery and resilience facility for culture because a holistic strategy for an inclusive, fair and sustainable development needs to have strong cultural dimensions. China, the United States and other large countries have established similar programs because they have realized that culture is key for addressing societal, environmental and economic problems. One of the main challenges is to make sure that cultures mainstream in different research and innovation programs and actions. The Eurasia Foundation has been philanthropically working on cross-cultural cooperation since its establishment on December 21st, 2009, advocating human rights, democracy and peace throughout its extensive network of over 200 universities in the world. Culture is the glue in the caring system, caring for world peace, for mutual understanding, for health and spiritual well-being, caring for education, for the environment, for community governance. Culture contributes to democratic, free and sustainable societies, boosting opportunities for caring and interconnecting communities. Culture achieves this through the circulation of basic human skills, procedures and values. This circulation takes place in encounters among people. However, cultural patterns can come to awareness or not and can be shaped through education. This is particularly important in the case of very different cultures, like those in the Western and non-Western worlds. The Eurasia Foundation has maintained a strong focus on education for the future, ever since its creation. The general aim of education is to equip people with the necessary competences, skills and experience for successful careers and social good. However, there is an increasing mismatch between professional profiles resulting from university education and the labour market. The National Center on Education and the Economy, NCEE, is an American non-profit organization whose mission is to analyze the implications of changes in the international economy for American education and formulate an agenda for American education based on that analysis and seek, whenever possible, to accomplish that agenda through policy change and development of the resources educators would need to carry it out. The NCEE tries to coordinate actions in order to have a greater impact upon innovation, achieve research excellence, improve teaching quality, increase student employability and social competitiveness, and in general promote 
stakeholder orientation. This is so because in the second decade of the 21st century, studies are showing that education is not achieving its goals of preparing individuals for life and employment, and that the problem lies in the neglect of fundamental competences that have to do with intrapersonal, interpersonal, and cross-cultural soft skills. The key question is then, is education giving young people the right skills? In order to answer this question, we need to first explore the differences between competences and skills, and between hard and soft skills. Competences are clusters of actions to achieve results. They include observable abilities, skills and knowledge, known normally as hard skills, typically easier to acquire, identify and manage. But they also include motivations and traits defined in terms of the behaviors needed for successful job performance. And these are soft skills, which tend to be harder to identify and measure because they lie below the surface in deep culture. Hard skills are often divided into domain general and domain specific skills and are needed in order to have access to the labor market. Hard skills are called technical skills and they are any skills related to a specific task or situation. They involve understanding and proficiency in such activity and methods, processes, procedures and techniques. These skills entail professional, technical and academic education, knowledge and training. But it is important to note that all skills function around two fundamental axes. Cognitive, involving the use of logical reasoning, but also intuitive and creative thinking, and practical, involving manual dexterity and the use of methods, materials, tools and instruments. People who stand out for their cognitive and pragmatic intelligence are especially competent in the executions of tasks, for example. However, there is a third tangential axis that cuts across the cognitive and the practical, the executive. People with both cognitive and executive intelligences are reflective people with a good capacity for problem solving. And those with a good capacity to draw up projects or plans stand out for their executive and pragmatic intelligence. Soft skills occur primarily in this tangential area. They represent a dynamic combination of cognitive and metacognitive skills, interpersonal, intellectual and practical skills. Soft skills help people to adapt and behave positively so that they can deal effectively with the challenges of professional and everyday life. These skills are crucial for successful careers. A previous model described the three axes in terms of breadth, broad and depth, presenting the evolution from the I-shaped to the T and P-shaped models and finally to the comb shape that you can see on your screen. This is a two-dimensional variation of the three-dimensional cube model that I presented in the previous slide and that includes broad knowledge in the shape of soft skills. In the near future, many of hard technical skills will be performed by artificial intelligence, mechanisms and robots. But what is it that artificial intelligence will find more difficult to learn and to do? The answer is soft skills. Soft skills can be defined as a combination of career attributes, social and communication skills, personality traits and emotional intelligence. They are desirable qualities that do not depend on technical knowledge. Soft skills represent personal skills necessary for such activities as teamwork and motivating others and 
Experts argue that they lie at the foundation of what makes someone rise to a leadership position. The interest in soft skills has increased over the course of the years. Now, in the 21st century, soft skills are a major differentiator, not just for employability, but also for success in life. Studies by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, an intergovernmental economic organization with 37 member countries whose goal is to stimulate economic progress and world trade, has confirmed this trend, establishing that 75% of long-term job success results from soft skills and only 25% from technical skills. The same OECD reports emphasize the importance of metacognitive skills for lifelong learning. Metacognition amounts to thinking about one's thinking. More specifically, it refers to the processes used to assess one's understanding. It includes critical thinking, reflection, and awareness of oneself as a thinker and as a learner. It uses strategic perspectives through value lenses. Alongside metacognition, awareness of impact for internal and external stakeholders is also essential. Thus, the tangential executive axis has become more and more important in recent years. However, it is paradoxical that we continue to cultivate the other two types of intelligence in our educational systems and cannot find ways to include ways of learning by doing, that is, executive soft skills. We're facing a very disruptive period that requires reshaping skills for working in unpredictable conditions. In this panorama, it is becoming more and more important to train students in fundamental soft skills. The focus in education needs to be shifted towards the practical value of what is being learned. This includes taking the initiative, spotting opportunities, and thinking outside the box, making things happen, reflecting and communicating, pivoting and adapting to VUCA environments, taking responsibility, using networking, personal effectiveness to shape and solve problems and manage risk taking. Value should not only be measured in terms of outcomes and results, but also in terms of the capacity to act upon opportunities and ideas and transform them into value for others. And this is what the humanities do. Here is the value created and how can it can be put to social cultural use. It's not about impact, it's about value creating. The learning lenses in your diagram should focus on education by experience, reflecting on both success and failure, coping with uncertainty and the risk of unintended outcomes. The legacy lenses should derive resources from previous knowledge of the community, in order to recombine it with new resources and go develop multiple ideas, opportunities and new creative solutions. The community lenses needs to enhance individual self-awareness and their self-efficacy within the group in order to enhance the group capacity to shape the course of events despite ambiguity, setbacks, and temporary failures. Group support can also provide increased resilience in the face of pressure and adversities. In summary, today's education requires the creation of more authentic learning environments in which the learning objectives are aligned with the requirements of today's societies, teaching students these crucial life skills. Education should become the process of equipping students with an enhanced capacity to generate ideas and with the skills to make these ideas happen. It needs to extend beyond the cognitive and the pragmatic access of knowledge, the theory and the impact, and include 
executive axis and with it a wide range of emotional, intellectual, social and cultural practices. The final aim in higher education should be to produce graduates with an awareness, a mindset and capabilities to generate original ideas in, respond to, in response to identified needs, opportunities and shortfalls and the ability to act on them even in changing circumstances. The personal attributes required of those called makers include self-awareness, open-mindedness, proactivity, curiosity, self-efficacy, effectiveness, a reflective mindset, flexibility, adaptability, determination, and resilience. Also, communication skills, the capacity to understand others, inclusive leadership skills, helping to engage others, the capacity to share and encourage others to develop innovative approaches and practices, creating and shaping realistic and relevant learning environments. These goals can be achieved by implementing design thinking methodologies in the classroom, including periods of group inspiration, emotional sharing that generates ideas in common in brainstorming situations, this is called divergent thinking, and followed by periods of refined research and the establishment of strategies to solve given problems selected by the group and this is the convergent thinking part. Design thinking helps enhance this executive axis. Okay, so now is your turn and we're going to be working on some soft skills. The basic is self-awareness. So we're going to do an activity which is called personal Branding. There are a lot of factors that have an impact on people's self-confidence. Some of these factors include self-esteem and self-awareness, motivation, social media, education, competition and cooperation, and so on. One of the main factors that can have a negative impact on people's self-confidence is low self-esteem and low self-awareness. Self-esteem starts to form from the early childhood, during the process of socialization. Nowadays, many cultures are based on competition, including the education system and forms of evaluations in school and universities. Social media can also have a negative influence on one's self-trust. So we need to move from competition towards cooperation. And in order to do this, we need to acknowledge that anyone in a team can bring in personal attributes that contribute to the common achievement of goals. So the game Personal Branding, this activity, promotes self-awareness and tries to convey individual experiences, skills, personality and so on to the group. It requires honesty, awareness of strengths and areas of success but also of those in need of improvement. And it also requires communicative skills to create a good impression and uh, to convey the necessary information to the group, as well as motivations. So these are some of the points of discussion that you can use to brand yourself within the group. Give three to five adjectives to describe yourself. Try to set priorities about involvement in the group and say what would you really like to do, uh, what makes you happy. Make a list of the skills you have. Think of ways to put them to particular tasks. To participate in any additional activities in school, college and university formal, non-formal, international, local, sports, volunteering, training courses. What are the transferable soft skills you have gained through these activities? What is your ambition and your goals? Where do you see yourself in five years? And what values do you bring to the group? Your enthusiasm, your personal qualities? These are just some suggestions. 
reflect also on the prerequisites for developing self-awareness, which are curiosity about yourself, willing and able to seek information and feedback about yourself from others, be prepared to consider and process this feedback, whether it's good or bad. And then think of this activity in terms of the wheel of life, which helps identify your life goals. Assess how happy you are with each area of your life, and this will help you establish future goals in each area. The previous activity that you have performed, branding yourself, brings to awareness your personal skills and any soft skills you may have acquired and puts them to value in front of the group. This is an activity that operates at an intrapersonal and an interpersonal level, so it brings awareness to you and to others. However, things get even more complicated when people from different cultures are part of the same working group. And in this case, awareness of these cross-cultural differences serves to identify diverse forms of behavior. Some of the personal values that you see on your screen may be different depending on the culture, particularly when these cultures are separated by large geographical distances. For example, the list of Western and non-Western values on your screen are very different, and it is important to get to know these differences. Use this slide to discuss within your group each of the values listed. So let's consider cross-culture communication and we're back to the wheel of life, Japanese style, and it's called Ikigai, the place where passion, mission, calling and career intersect. Reflect on the emotional aspects of intersubjective communication and cross-culture communication through the questions that you find in the following slide. What makes you tick? What touches you? What are you good at? Which unique talents do you have? How can you further develop these talents? What can you do for others? Is there something you can contribute to the world? What change would you like to bring about in the world? Become a hero or a heroine. Explore Campbell's monomyth and the concept of change, liminality, threshold, as related to individual awareness, which is what we have been working, and intersubjective experiences, how we cooperate with others. Remember that Campbell's model is based on Carl Jung theories on psychology, analytic psychology. What do Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo all have in common with the heroes of ancient myths? What if I told you they are all variants of the same hero? Do you believe that? Joseph Campbell did. He studied myths from all over the world and published a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, retelling dozens of stories and explaining how each represents the monomyth or hero's journey. So what is the hero's journey? Think of it as a cycle. The journey begins and ends in the hero's ordinary world, but the quest passes through an unfamiliar, special world. Along the way, there are some key events. Think about your favorite book or movie. Does it follow this pattern? Status quo, that's where we start. One o'clock, call to adventure. The hero receives a mysterious message, an invitation, a challenge, Two o'clock, assistance. The hero needs some help, probably from someone older, wiser. Three o'clock, departure. The hero crosses the threshold from his normal, safe home and enters the special world and adventure. We're not in Kansas anymore. Four o'clock, trials. Being a hero is hard work. Our hero solves a riddle, slays a monster, escapes from a trap. Five o'clock, approach. It's time to face the biggest ordeal. The hero's worst fear. Six o'clock, crisis. This is the hero's darkest hour. He faces death and possibly even dies, only to be reborn. Seven o'clock, treasure. As a result, the hero claims some treasure, special recognition or power. Eight o'clock, result. This can vary between stories. 
Do the monsters bow down before the hero? Or do they chase him as he flees from the special world? Nine o'clock, return. After all that adventure, the hero returns to his ordinary world. 10 o'clock, new life. This quest has changed the hero. He has outgrown his old life. 11 o'clock, resolution. All the tangled plot lines get straightened out. 12 o'clock, status quo, but upgraded to a new level. Nothing is quite the same once you're a hero. Many popular books and movies follow this ancient formula pretty closely, but let's see how well The Hunger Games fits the hero's journey template. When does Katniss Everdeen hear a call to adventure that gets the story moving? When her sister's name is called from the lottery? How about assistance? Is anyone going to help her on her adventure? Hey, Mitch. What about departure? Does she leave her ordinary world? She gets on a train to the capital. OK, so you get the idea. What do you have in common with Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo? Well, you're human, just like them. The hero's journey myth exists in all human cultures and keeps getting updated because we humans reflect on our world through symbolic stories of our own lives. You leave your comfort zone, have an experience that transforms you, and then you recover and do it again. You don't literally slay dragons or fight Voldemort, but you face problems just as scary. Joseph Campbell said, in the cave you fear to enter lies the treasure you seek. What is the symbolic cave you fear to enter? Auditions for the school play? Baseball tryouts? Love? Watch for this formula in books, movies, and TV shows you come across. You will certainly see it again, but also be sensitive to it in your own life. Listen for your call to adventure. Accept the challenge. Conquer your fear and claim the treasure you seek. And then do it all over again. Now again, get together in groups, and bearing in mind the hero's journey, think of a movie and try to identify the stages of the heroine's journey. What are the relevant moments of the story? Do the protagonists cope with uncertainty, ambiguity, and risk? How do the protagonists require collaboration from others to solve the problems they encounter? Do the protagonists pass through liminal experiences, places, times, processes that help them learn and grow? Are these experiences linked to their errors and mistakes? How does this contribute to personal development? How can these errors and failures be turned to the protagonist's advantage and rethink opportunities? What does your story tell about change, process and mindset? What would your strategy be to cope with ambiguity and fear? What motivations you pursue in your current goals and how would you plan to overcome obstacles? What would you do if you are given an important assignment which is very challenging for you and you cannot find the right solution? This is the maker's perspective. Now, do you know a little bit more about yourself? Do you know a little bit more about those in your group? Go out there and change the world. Thank you very much for your attention.